Alrighty, so today we're going to do the Emotion Index, and by the way, my voice definitely feel a lot better compared to Monday and Tuesday. I mean, on Monday, if you watched my Mega Review, you can see my voice was completely shot by the time uh, when we get to, to the latter part of that Mega Review, and I didn't do a video on Tuesday because it was also so, uh, completely shot, but... Fortunately, uh, today when I woke up, uh, my voice does feel a lot better. Uh, it's not 100%, but it will do in terms of looking this emotion index. And I thought this was a perfect time to do so because we have the All-Star break. We have the All-Star game later tonight. And then we have a month-long break because of the lead through the game not resuming until August 20th. And that, I thought this was a great time to see how their fans feel about their team as we're not actually officially heading to the second half of the season because technically uh for most teams they've already played 22 or 23 games into the season so technically for most teams there's only like 11 or 12 games left we're already into the latter third part of the season kind of the home stretch of the schedule and we're going to see whether their fans feel like uh they're, they're in the bring on the playoff mode which is for those Fans are supporting teams there at the top of the standings where they, they know that they're going to make it to the playoffs. And it's all about what's going to happen in the playoffs to determine their season. Or though we're in a good spot, which is teams that are definitely in playoff contention and are going to make it to the playoffs. Uh, the third category is the mad category or too inconsistent. And more times than not, I feel like fans get very frustrated uh, when they see... Uh, see their team in this category because they feel like on one night their team can look like an MLS Cup contender and then on the other night they look like they're going to miss the playoffs and look like they're nowhere near to be a playoff contender but it's a whole lot better than being in this fourth category of fans feel like well their team is definitely going through a downward trend and maybe is going to miss the playoffs and things are not going well or the fifth category which is the as always the panic category but i decided to also include the see you next season mode category in there because originally when i did this uh i basically put all the team on my notepad before i do this video i actually realized there was not a lot of team that actually were in this category which i was originally going to make it as a panic category and i make a see you next season mode like somewhere over there so yeah because of that i decided to kind of include them in the bottom tier and I, I think the reason why there's not a lot of teams in the panic category is because there's still a lot of teams that is well in distance uh of of uh the the playoff spot i mean you could be near the the bottom of the standings but you're you're still not that far far out in terms of uh thinking about complete panic and that you're also maybe thinking about see you next season mode although we do have a couple of teams that are definitely in that mode and we'll definitely talk about that but with that being said let us actually begin and we're going to go alphabetical order we're going to start with Atlanta United yeah for Atlanta they're definitely here um it's, it's the the mad category it's the too inconsistent ca category and I think their fans feel like that's kind of the case for the past month or so just so inconsistent this Atlanta team there's been times where they've been playing well and at times look like the old Atlanta that we we saw before and then there's time that they have the reminiscent of an Atlanta United team from last season and and that that COVID shortened season there's just no consistency can be found uh in this team and that's kind of fr frustrating because again with the talent that they have in their disposal this team should be doing a lot lot better than than where they are right now though that being said you know they have had some some injuries to deal with uh you know losing Yakima Keys who has not returned return on uh, still on the IR for the past couple of weeks and also this is the second time he's on the the IR uh this season yeah that's definitely going to deplete a little bit on on the the attacking end I mean Tiago Mata is doing everything and anything to try to will will this this attack but he can't do do it all and that yeah as a result you just kind of had, had a team that's just very inconsistent incon one week they look like they could get something going and then the next week uh they, they just uh take two step back and, and suffer a loss then we go to Austin FC. So for Austin, uh, if this was a month ago, I would say Austin would be in this spot where things are definitely uh, not going well for Los Verdes and and look like like this season is a complete disaster. But the reason why they have risen up uh, in this spot where we're in a good spot is they've been been one of the harder te team in MLS. I mean, they ha have definitely uh, re rebounded their their season to a point where you know the attack has definitely looked looked much better. Sebastian Dre, you see, is is a key. Uh, component of that he started to look the the MVP or at least uh the MVP contender from la last season uh Jarzy Zard has also started to chip in some some goal and even some unlikely goal score like uh uh guys like Rodney Red Redis and and Rigoni starts to to score 
a couple of goals there. Now, the defense is still a problem. And I think if you're an Austin fan, that is still a a, a concern because the, the back line is still... Uh, still not been very good this year though that being said um you know a, a lot of the reason why they haven't conceded as much goals as you would think that for a team that basically had no back line is because brett stuver has been incredible i mean brett stuver probably one of the most underrated goalkeeper this season a goalkeeper that really fly under the radar he single-handedly at times kept this austin team in games and i've seen so many times where austin uh could be outplaying a game and because brett stuver uh, is there and also uh thankfully they run into some teams that are not very fortunate in terms of finishing their their chances that austin gives to them that's the reason why they were able to to stay in the game and able to win some of these games but that being said uh moving on to charlotte yeah for charlotte they're definitely in the panic category i mean for this team you know you know eight games without a win right now and things are just kind of fall apart to a point where it's kind of like looking like the beginning of the season where there's just no direction uh, with this team, and despite the fact that, you know, when you look at some of the signings that made, I mean, again, even the recruitment has been, been weird, too. I think when you look at all the recent signs they have, they keep signing in midfielders that are already uh, in their 30s and just kind of make their, their midfield much older, which that's not always a, a recipe in terms of trying to turn the season around. And you, on top of that, that with the bad performance, you, you, you uh, wonder why that why Charlotte fans are absolutely fuming at their their team and also uh, at their front office in terms of making these these weird weird signings that have not worked whatsoever and that yeah I mean things have definitely not gone well for the Charlotte team they're dropping down the the standings with this win winless run they can't win at home can't win on the on the road right now and it, it is definitely full on blown panic mode for the Charlotte team is definitely in, as at least for some of their fans that feel about this team uh then we go to fc cincinnati or actually not go to fc cincinnati we go to chicago because of, uh we, chicago actually comes before fc cincinnati in terms of the outback and yeah for the flyer we has got to be right here we're in a good spot and the reason why we're in a good spot is because they won five out of the last six game and you talk about one of the hottest team in the league chicago believe it or not is one of the hottest team in the league and that's no pun intended in terms of the the chicago fire but yeah i mean this this team you know i will say say this i know fire fans will say well we've seen this story before we've seen how how they they give me some optimism and then it just kind of fall apart uh for the latter part of the season and we're gonna see whether or not if that's gonna be the case because you know there is that narrative that things will fall apart for this team at, at least if the season resume and they can just completely fall apart but as of now i think fire fans can't complain about their team i mean they're playing some very good good soccer their defense is absolutely excellent chris brady uh you know I, i'm not gonna say that that he he, he is gonna be just as good as gaga Lena, but he's been a really good replacement uh for for him and really the fire has done a really good job developing goalkeepers the last couple of years and that yeah as a resort this is a fire team teams have done well and not to mention i think the other reason why this fire team has been playing so well is they don't do do the most chicago fire th things at the end of the game i think the reason why when you look at this team and why they were been so bad in the beginning of the season it's not because they've they been playing bad it's because they do some of the things some of the the dumbest way in terms of of losing in games or dropping points uh uh it, at the end of the game and at least recently we just have not seen that and you, you know, full credit has to be in terms of Frank Kolpas really has started to to put that that mentality of the fact that they're not going going to do do a very Chicago fire at kind of moment blowing two nothing lead at at home and and losing that one or drawing the game. So yeah, um, you know, I think Fire fans are going to be very happy about their team. Though again, you know, we'll see whether that lasts as the the season goes along. Then we go to FC Cincinnati. Yep, FC Cincinnati is definitely in that spot. I mean, you know, if there is probably the most happiest fans right now in, in MLS has to be FC Cincinnati fans. It's been an incre incredible season for them. They're definitely uh, uh, potentially going to win the Supporter Shield this season, which could be a blessing or a, a curse. I mean, last season it was a blessing for LAFC winning the, the Supporter Shield and went on to win MLS Cup. But more times or not, it's been, been a curse. And, you know, that's something that at Nolan T... But no, and his team will be worried about. But still, this team has has been playing playing very well. And this team, even when they're not not at their best, uh, they they've been able to find find a way to grind out resort. And that's kind of what what you need to do if you want to to win MLS Cup. Like when you went in, went into the playoffs, 
you need to win those those close games. You need to find ways to to go uh pull pull it out over the line and i do think that the cincinnati team has that that mentality to do so and it's no wonder why i think they're the odds on favorites right now to potentially win mls cup then we go to the colorado rapids yeah for the colorado rapids they're definitely here and they're one of those two teams that i can safely say they're in see you next season mode again you know this team they're they're at the bottom of the the western conference and and, looking till july to get their first first home win and that they've only got three wins this season and it's no doubt that it's been see you next season mode for this rapids team for a a very long time and that that again it, it, it's a, such a shame because when you look at you know at this team you know i think from from the beginning we kind of had a feeling that there was going to be problem with this team i even said it in the the preview where where's the goal is going to come from well that is still a question for this colorado rapids team they play playing so many scoreless draw this season and while the defense uh, at times has been solid because they can't score they can't win games and again if you're a Rapids fan I'm pretty sure they're they're they're, they're probably already thinking about next season and just praying that the front office would actually spend some money because you know uh, out of all of these team in MOS that is probably the most frustrated toward their front office the Rapids fan base probably are right up there in terms of the top and demanding their 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 front office to spend some money and it's not not easy to say because when you're owned by by crocky crocky uh and a, a guy that doesn't really care about the rapids at all yeah that's that's gonna be tough in terms of them actually spending some money to improve their their team uh then we go to the columbus crew yeah you know for columbus i think they're right here i mean columbus is a fun team to watch i think if you want to talk about uh, some of the most watchable team as a neutral columbus games are always entertaining but you know as i said before just because your team is entertaining to watch doesn't mean uh your fan base will in- enjoy it and i think columbus is an, a good example where well yes there's been time where crew fans have been enjoying what will Fernandez has done to this team and played that entertaining brand of soccer there's also t- times where old habits start to develop where they they once again can see goals late to drop drop points and not to mention i feel like this season has been a very columbus crew kind uh season and really that that's this has kind of been a case for them for the past couple of years. They cannot win games on the road. Like, they, they simply cannot win games on, on the road this season. It, it's been a huge mystery to this team of no matter what kind of talent that this team has had, they just can't, can't get it done on the road. And I, I don't know why that, that is, is kind of uh, uh, the case. And especially when you have, have a guy like Will Nancy, a team or a coach that uh, just, just got this Montreal team – of getting the most wins on the road last season, and you think that would change the fortune uh, when he come to Columbus? That's not been the case. It's been the same old, same old. This team has struggle, struggle on the road, and they, they need to, to potentially fix that because, you know, uh, it's good that they're, of course, winning all their home games, and I think they're going to make it to the playoffs, but at some point they need to start winning, winning these road games too because just because you win all your home, home games and uh, get some points on the road, uh, that format doesn't e- equal to you potentially getting home field advantage in the playoffs, and that that can be a big thing as we've seen seen in these past couple of play- playoffs on uh, the last couple of season. Then we go to DC United. Yeah, for DC they're going to be right here, and they're pretty much just stuck here for for the whole whole season. I I, I don't think I've put DC uh really really anywhere or higher. Well, I, I think I've definitely put them in the second quarter category at once but they, they've been pretty much stuck in this third category and i think this season if you're a dc fans this is kind of as as the mo- much most expected ca- kind of thing you will think about that your team uh being in if you were in the beginning of the season i think a lot of dc fans i mean even some of the more optimistic dc fans will say that well you know i feel like this could be inconsistent a very inconsistent season because just the way that this team I- is built it just feels like it's a very boom and bust kind of team. When things are going well, things are going well. When things are not going going well, and when guys are are are, are not not stepping up, then uh, things are not going to go well. And, and we're seeing it right now this season for DC. Like there's been times where uh, when the the likes of Christian Benteke and Mateus click uh, clicks in, uh, no pun intended. That that is, um, yeah. Uh, this DC team can can definitely beat beat any one but when those guys are not not uh doing well especially Benteke uh kind of live up to to his uh trademark of missing sitters that's been, been the reason why he's been keep of uh, being one of the the most lethal striker in the world uh this DC team doesn't doesn't do do well and start to lo- lose some games so again it's just it's just inconsistent 
Houston, and I mean, I guess it's a little bit better than last season when they were just a just a a, a flaming mess and finished at the bottom of the standings. But it's just again, it, it feels like it's a very weird weird kind of team where you know when you have an inconsistency team like that, uh, I don't think they're gonna do much heading into the playoffs. But honestly, playoffs is is just kind of kind of what maybe some DC fans are, are hoping for for, and um, we'll see whether or not not uh if they can can do so uh when they continue this inconsistent run i mean i'm assuming they they will because of all how the how many teams are able to make it to the playoffs this season uh but that being said they're actually just sitting in the knife spot right now and they're just above the red line as we speak uh then we go to fc dallas yeah things are not going well for fc dallas i mean they are dropping like a rock in these past months uh goal scoring has been a huge issue with this team i mean uh i think it is pretty clear to say that if you are a team and you cannot score goals you're going to suffer in terms of return and i think fc dallas fans are see seeing that and i i think think they can all agree that without jesus Ferreira, this team is completely toothless on the attack and that that has to be a huge con concern concern too because you know uh well jesus Ferreira has had another good season for dallas if he kind of had that season like last year where he kind of dropped off near the end of the year this team is in serious trouble. And we're already seeing without him uh, when he's away on Gold Cup duty. This team just have no attacking threat. Now, a lot of that has to do uh, with guys on their attack that has started to, to uh, or, or have been injured. I mean, Paul Ariola has been on the IR for a long time, time now. But uh, Alan Velasco, it's been a huge regression of uh, a season. He's not been as good as what we've seen last year. And then after that, <laughs> there's a huge question mark of who is actually the number nine of this team without Jesus Ferreira. So, yeah, things are not going well for, for Dallas. And despite the fact that they have one of the best, they're still a very good defensive team. You can't score goals. You're not going to, to get a, a lot of, of wins and resort in your favorite. Then we go to the Houston Dynamo. So Houston has really dropped to this category where it's becoming kind of meh and kind of inconsistent. Though I think it's been inconsistent in a, in a not good way for the Dynamo in these last couple of games where, yeah, the resort... Things are starting to kind of, kind of come back, back down to earth. I mean, remember when this Dynamo team and when Ben Olsen uh, was really having this team, team on fire back in the latter part of June and into early, or actually in in the month of June. Yeah, ever since the latter part of the June and heading into July, they have cooled off, off dramatically. And and I think if you're a Dynamo fan, you could say that. Well, here we go. This is like the narrative again. We've seen before where this team ha has started to do well and then they go into a bad run of form and and they're, they're going to start dropping down in the playoff position and i i think that's kind of started the case but what's also alarming for this dynamo team they're not winning games at home i mean the, the home field advantage for for them has not been as good as what we've seen in the beginning of the year where they were one of the the, the toughest team to, to uh play at home and for for a good reason because when you go to to houston and play in that furnace known as uh, PNC feel, or actually it's not called PNC feel anymore. It's called Shell Energy feel and 100 to get free heat. It's going to be re really tough to get resort, but teams have been able to do so in the last couple of games, and I think a lot maybe has to do with the, the fact that the Dynamo just didn't have. They don't don't have have that that consistency that that they shown and that that quality that we have shown uh, in the beginning of of the season, and also not to mention goal scoring has been a pro problem for this team team in the last couple of weeks too then we go to sporting kc so yeah for sporting kc i mean you know i i, I mean it's, it's been a very strange season for sporting kc i mean they started the seat season uh with with them uh without winning in 10 games and their fans were, were demanding uh peter vermees to be fired and then they go on a very good run in in may to get themselves back into playoff conversation and now they're just kind of stuck in mediocrity so in some ways sporting kc Fans have experienced all kinds of, of type of emotion of their team of being at the highs of highs, the lows of lows, and now being being inconsistent. So, yeah, again, if you're a Sporting KC fan, I mean, I don't know what you feel about your team. I mean, I, I think think the quality is still there uh, with this team, but it's all about whether they can put it to, together. And if they can do so, then I think this team will, will make it to the playoffs. But if they can't, like what we see in the first hand game of the, the season – um yeah they're not gonna make it to the playoffs so if you're a sporting case fan again there, there's definitely that concern of 
you don't know how this team is going to look like in the latter part of this season. I mean, you already experienced all kind of motion of your team. So what is this latter part of the season is going to be? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? Or is it going to be just like right down the middle, like what we've seen right, right now where they've been winning some games, but they also ha have losing some games and at times look like the team that they were in the first 10 game of the season. Uh, then we go to the LA Galaxy. So, you know what? For the Galaxy, I'm actually going to put them here. And despite the fact that they are, are still very, very uh, uh, well, I wouldn't say very far away from playoff contention. They're, they're within striking distance. I think if you're a Galaxy fan, you've you got to be happy in terms of the good spot that they've been in. And who knew that firing Chris Klein uh, was actually the solution of, of this team and the, the rally cry of playing for Chicharito, who... Uh, most li likely, um, you know, we won't see him in a Galaxy jersey uh, ever again because of him go going on. on uh, he's going to be done for, for this season, and his contract is going to be en ending this year. Uh, who knew that that would be be a way for them to, to rally and really go on a really good un unbeaten run that unfortunately did came to an end in the game against uh, the Vancouver Whitecaps. But besides that, Flemish, they've been playing very, very well, um, even beating their, their in inner city rival LAFC in that, that El Trafico at the Rose Bowl and really have now given them some momentum heading in the last uh la latter part of the stretch. So yeah, if they can continue to play really like that, they can definitely get themselves into the playoffs. And again, you know, it doesn't take much to get into the playoffs because of how teams are separated by not very, very a lot of points right now. Uh, they can keep keep winning. They can definitely get themselves in the playoffs and really put pressure on teams that is just above the red line. Then we go to LAFC. So, you know, I think for LAFC, they're kind of right here where on, on one hand, I think they're 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 ready uh for the, the playoffs. But on the other hand, I think there is some concern if you're an LAFC fan. And obviously, I think uh the biggest concern I think with this team is they, they need to have a number nine. I mean they, they just simply don't don't have a number nine uh right right now that, that can be be a lethal goal scorer. And who knew that uh getting rid of Chicharro wrong go uh, last season turns out to to come back to haunt LAFC in a bit big way and that you know Denise Bawanga besides the fact that he had an incredible first two months of the season you know he's been str struggling and he's been snake bit uh bad and as a result this team has been struggling in terms of scoring goals but I do believe that that if they do bring in that that number nine this team the, will get them themselves back into to contention because if, if they do have that number nine this team will be like last season this team is a well real machine and while yes they have to de deal with the wear and tear in terms of ccl it hasn't really affected them in in a way where where they have really dropped down the the standings and fall off the map they're, they're still well in, in distance in ter terms of uh finishing first place uh second in the standings a couple of points behind uh st louis so yeah this is a team that i i think it is bring on on the, the playoff well and see how they're going to defend their crown but at the same time you know I think LAFC fans would, would really hope that their 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 front office would bring in a proven number nine so they can get themselves back into uh, contention sta status. Because I think if you look at this LAFC team right now, I don't think anybody will fear this LAFC t team. I think think people will be comfortable of playing this LAFC team and have the confidence if they do play them in the playoffs, they can knock them them out. And and this is where they, they need that number nine to bring that fear factor back of the fact that they are, are a, a, a team team to be, be fear, fear with in the Western Conference, and we'll see when that's the they, they will do that. Then we go to Miami, and for Inter Miami, this is going to be tough because, um, you know, I, you know what? For Miami, I'm gonna actually make a special category here, just draw a box here, and I'm gonna put a question mark, and I'm gonna put them here. And the reason why I put them here is because you know I know we have the whole messy kind kind of mania that is going on right now ever since he signed uh they signed him and then of course they they just got Sergio Busquets and I heard uh Luis Suarez and and Jordi Alba is on their way to be joining this Inter Miami team and again I don't know how they're gonna fit all these players uh within the roster rules I'm pretty sure MLS is is trying to give Miami some leeway and maybe maybe Miami is finding some loophole uh in a way to find all those players or maybe in, in the end they're probably gonna get fined by the the league that is but yeah you know the the, the question uh for inter miami is, is the big question is, is that yes they're well off the, the pace in the playoffs and this team should technically be in see you next season mode 
but because of this injection of, of, of the superstar talent that well they are ca kind of uh already out of their 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 prime though you know even with Messi at, at the age of of 38 he is still performing at at a very very hot level uh right now that that can really carry this this Miami team on his back and that that could also be a good influence and could be a good good injection in term terms of this attack too but obviously, like I said, we'll, we'll we'll see whether that, of course, would would work out. And not to mention, I think the the big concern I still have with this team is I don't know where I dropped my my pen. That is actually, you know what? I'm gonna uh, use a use my red pen because I dropped my purple pen on on the floor. But the big question I I still have with this team, and even with all all these uh kind of big names that's coming to Inter Miami, the defense is still a huge concern. And, and the fact that, you know, a lot of these big name kind of players, you know, unless they can play defense, which I think Jordi Alba can be in, the, in that spot, that it is still a hu huge concern because, you know, while the attack hasn't been good this season, the defense has been absolutely atro atrocious this year too. And Drake Callender is the only reason why it's keeping this team of not conceding the most goal we've seen this season in the league. So, yeah, again, it's a huge question mark for this Inter Miami P Team. I mean, I'm pretty sure Miami fans are very happy of seeing the, these players come to their, their team. And there's a lot of eyeball right now on this Inter-Miami team. Not only in the league, but in the world in, in general. So, yeah, it, it's a it's a huge question mark, I would say, say uh, about this this team and where they are are heading into the latter part of the season. Uh, then we go to Minnesota and to the Loons. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, it's... It's kind of frustrating seeing this this team because I know this team can can be a lot better than where they are in, in the standings, and I think everybody knows that this team could be a lot better in their standings. And in some way, you could say that this this team this the way they play, played this season kind of kind of is a little reminiscent of Minnesota sports culture, where they're they're just simply cursed uh, because you know they 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 play some of these games that they they play they play very well. This team should be doing a much better if you look at the expectancy goals and the expectancy stats but this is also a reason why i don't look at the expectancy stats and don't use that as as an excuse of saying that this team should be better at the end of the day if this team can't improve their finishing i mean i i can't i can't see how this team is going to make it get to the play playoffs i mean they're currently sitting in 10th place and that you know there's times where they they, they can be be a team that could could be be a, a playoff contender or even an, an MLS Cup contender when they're playing at their best and when everything is going well, but that's been far and few between, and and they they need to fi figure that that stuff out because right like I said they're sitting in tenth tenth place right now. The other thing I haven't even mentioned is the home form, which again it's still a huge mystery right now of how in the world they have been doing so poorly at home despite the fact that they they've been playing well at home. Like if they actually should should they perform even near their expectancy goal ratio, they should be winning a lot more home games than they have this, this season. But that, again, it, it just boils down to, to the finishing. And also, uh, maybe on the defensive side too, because there's been times where it's been a no-show in the defense and the midfield. But more times than not this season, it boils down to the finishing. If they can finish, this team is going to make it to playoffs. If they can't finish, this team is not going to make it to, to the playoffs this season. Then we go to Montreal. And for Montreal, yeah, they're kind of right in the middle too. Again, you know, this is a team that I think this season, uh, they're they're kind of inconsistent in their category mainly because they're a typical kind of MLS team that are doing very well at at home home this season. Although it, although in the last couple of games, with besides the the win that they had against Charlotte, they have had some some issue getting home wins at Stal Saputo. But uh, majority of the time, they've been able to do do well and have a very solid home record. Problem is, they have only only won once. This season on the road and that's kind of what's holding back this Montreal team in terms of making the the playoffs so we'll, we'll see whether they can can fix that that kind of hope uh well fix that that role form that that they have because if they can do so then I think this team will sneak into the playoffs but if they can this team is not going to make it to the playoffs then we go to Nashville now for Nashville I think um you know I'm going to put them in this spot even though I know some Nashville fans will say that things are not going going well in fact you know what Actually, you know what? I'm going to put them in this spot. And I know they're in fourth place. And I know, know this team should be able to make it to the playoffs. But I think the reason 
I, I can understand why some of the fans will say that things are not going well for this team. I mean, Hani Mukhtar hasn't been been a, a guy that has been on, on, on fire lately and haven't been on an MVP kind, kind of level. And I think that's going to play a big part of why the, the attack has struggled. But really, uh, the bottom line with this Nashville team and their struggle has really been they just don't have, have a number nine. They just don't have, have a, a number nine. And anybody on this, this attack that has been a consistently... Uh, goal scorer to kind of help out and relieve the pressure that Hani Mukhtar has had. I mean, there's no doubt that I think back when, when Nashville was playing very well uh, back in May and June, it was a lot to do with the fact that, yes, uh, Hani Mukhtar was kind of going going nuclear again, but also he was getting getting some help from some of his supporting cast, uh, guys like Fafa Pico, Tio Bunbury, and even Jacob Schaffelberg uh, is chipping in the goals, but ever since, none of those guys have stepped up done so well to be fair Jacob Schaffberg has been kind of away from Canada from Gold Cup duty but Fava Biko and, and Teal Bunbury hasn't really stepped up in terms of the goal scoring department and help relieve this this attack and you you see the the Nashville team and the problem that they have this season and I think the other issue I would say about this Nashville team and this is a very strange reason they have not played well on the road this season this is probably the worst season that they play on the road under Gary Smith and it's kind of weird too because you know with the way how they they built and the way that Gary Smith and the the tactics that this team is it's set up perfectly to win on the the road and I think that's also kind of the reason why last season they were doing badly at at home because um you know with the way that they have set up and maybe a part of that is, is that they're trying to make Geodes Park uh as their actual home uh they they aren't able well, uh, to do so, but this season has been kind of the complete opposite. I mean, this season, uh, they they have not, had no problem in terms of, of getting wins at Geodes Park. The role form has just not been been very Nashville feel like, and they they the way that they they play on the road, they they just haven't looked like like a, a team where where I've seen before, where it's a very tight, lightly lightly uh packed kind of team, a team that is hard to to break down and will able to hit you on the counter attack and able to sneak in a one nothing or two nothing win on the road. Uh, then we go to New England, and for the Rams, yeah, they're going to be right next to the category of where FC Cincinnati is. I mean, you know, for the Rams, I'm pretty sure it's it's bring on the, the playoff mode. And again, I think this season was kind of what Rams fan was hoping last season was, where they can, can redeem themselves and really they get themselves to the, the promised land, or at least Bruce Arena, bring them to the promised land of reaching MLS Cup and finally ending the curse of not winning an MLS Cup despite being there five times previously. But obviously, I, I think it's also going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, once we get to the playoffs, how far they're going to go. And especially with the way that the East, it's still very, very, very tight. And the fact that I think right now there could be, be three or four contender, I mean, between them, FC Cincinnati and the Philadelphia Union, and maybe Nashville, if they can get themselves a, a, a another decent attacker to help relieve Hani Mukhtar going forward, I, I, it's going to be tough for them them to to battle out. I, and I, I think when you look at when they won the supporter shoot that season, that was kind of a huge miss opportunity, albeit I know Rams fans are still complaining about the, the schedule, how it kind of went uh, against them. But yeah, overall, I, I think this could... It, this could maybe be the year for for the Rams, but it's going to be definitely much more cha challenging compared to where where they won the the support sh their shield a couple of years ago. Just because the East, I I think I think when you look at at teams that that could potentially reach the MOS Cup, uh, the East is definitely going to be harder to to try to do do so because there's going to be much more more good teams in the East. Whereas in the West, I think when you you look at all these teams that make it to the playoffs, I think every team in the West will will feel feel like they have a shot because of the way that there's really no team in, in the West that you can legitimately say that they are clearly the odds on favorites of winning, uh, of representing the, the West in MOS. And again, you, you just can't say that with, with the East because there's just so many good teams right now. Then we go to the Red Bulls. Uh, yeah, things are still not going well with this team. And I might as well just put their other, their other New York team on this because they're kind of both in the same boat where, you know, things are not going going well but it, it's gone a lot a little bit better uh, i mean it, it's gone a little bit better compared to beginning of the season where it was an absolute absolute train wreck uh you know for the red bulls and nycfc both teams kind of had the same issue goal scoring has been been a problem and while nycfc they might be on on their way up because they finally signed a a striker and we'll see whether they can that will lift up their their ceiling 
Uh, I can't say the same about the New York Red Bulls. I mean, again, you know, this this team have really underperformed uh, the, this season. You know, Dante Benzier uh, is definitely going to go down as another very disappointing sign, signing in that DP number nine row. And I, I, I started to think that maybe for the Red Bulls, that number nine spot is just like like the, the same situation that Minnesota is going through. And nobody in that number nine position is able, able to to perform well and that it feels like like ever since bwp left left this this team uh it's he's kind of almost put a, a curse on this team that there's going to be no other good number nine that will ever play well for this this red bulls teams and it's kind of seems like it, it's been the case like really the last the only number nine that i can think of recently for the the red bulls as it has done well is pro probably brian white but they moved him him on to the vancouver uh, white caps and look what ha how he's he's done doing his time with uh, the white caps so yeah again this red bulls team it's just the attack is, is a huge issue it's been kind of a problem that they've been having in the beginning of the season and their fans are kind of frustrated about about that that i mean at least they, they keep games close but if you can't score you're not going to win a, a lot of games then we go to orlando yeah for orlando um i'm going to put them right here in the middle and that's kind of where they've been stuck in 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 this season i mean if you're, you you talk about about orlando city fans back in the month of may and you, you talk about how they feel about their team they're probably going to say the same thing as we're now into the middle part of the season they're still too inconsistent they're they're still 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 a, a team that that could be a lot better than they are though i will say that you know recently they have started to show some promise i think you know when you look at the 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 signings that they made there are some players that that they signed or started to, to step stepped up all on the attacking end but still yeah the inconsistency is a huge problem for this orlando city side though i would also say that who knew that out of all the big signing that they have this this offseason the guy that is really performing in in the attacking end is duncan mcguire i mean duncan mcguire was was supposed to be a, a guy that you know he, when he came in people didn't expect a lot of him he maybe it's just kind of a, a, a replacement uh when arjun Ka kara is um is maybe taking uh, some rest or maybe uh is on on the ir but man he has really took that number nine spot and took took it at his will to a point where you know I, i've been making a lot of daryl dk kind of comparison because this is what daryl dk was coming from the super draft uh really light up up the, the 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 attack of this orlando city side and we're starting to seeing the same thing with, with duncan mcguire just being red hot this this season and again if there is a rookie of the the year award or maybe the young player of the year I feel like Duncan McGuire maybe should get some recognition. I mean, I I don't know if he's going to get enough votes to potentially win that, but he definitely should should be because this is a guy that again came out of the Super Draft. Not a lot of people uh, know a, a lot about him, and not a lot of people think that he's going to be be a ten plus goal scored. And right now, he's pretty close of getting getting that. I mean, it's been an incredible full season that he's been been having with orlando city uh then we go to the philadelphia union so yeah for the union i think they're back up here i mean i know union fans were a little bit concerned because they did had a bad run of form in the latter part of june but things have definitely been much better recently i mean i wouldn't say much better in terms of that they've been kind of a buzzsaw kind of union team that we've we've seen before that score five six kind of go but this is a team that started to to look like like what we see with fc cincinnati a team that you know, even when they're not playing well, they find a way to uh, win win games. And I also think that during the bad run of form, a lot of that has to do with the fact that they didn't have their number one in Andre Blake. And how many times I've said that Andre Blake has really raised the ceiling of this team and, and that it's, it's still a, a crime against humanity, the fact that he wasn't selected in the All-Star game this season. But yeah, I think this Union team, they're they're loaded to, to make it uh, another run. But like I said about New England... Uh, you know, it's going to be tougher this season because there are, between them and FC Cincinnati and, again, maybe Nashville, they can get things going on the attack. This is going to be a very competitive Eastern Conference heading into the playoffs. There's going to be a lot of good team in this playoffs that, that I think if I look back of all the teams, good teams that, that have, have played in a season that didn't end up winning MLS Cup, I think this season we're going to see a couple of teams that maybe end up in the list of the best team to not win an MLS Cup. Uh, this year because there's just so many good teams in the east that can really uh represent the eastern conference for mls cup uh then we go to the portland timbers yeah uh for the portland timbers i mean i wouldn't put them right here 
if it wasn't for their, their win against the Columbus crew, and in some way, for blowing that lead, it looked like they were on verge of doing that point. But again, you know, things are still not going well for this team to a point where, where this Timbers fan base are panicking because, again, you know, the, the attack is not go, go, going well. And this is even when they have event they're back in this this team. They have not done so well to a point where Ray Bowley is literally the only guy that can score score goals for, for this team. Like If you only have one guy that can score the, the, the goals for the team and, and he's not going like Hani Mukhtar level kind of nuclear, uh, that could be a hu huge concern. And defensively, they've also been, been poor at, at time this year. There's question in terms of the goalkeeping being spot. I mean, I guess Ivesic has not been, been doing well this season to a point where he's he's now get, getting getting uh dropped down the pecking order and David Bingham is actually now the the number one for this this timber side and he's, he's been okay but not been 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 out of early as we we've seen with with, with goalkeepers in, in this timbers team so yeah overall I, I think for a timbers fan it, it's still things are not going well and that there's not a lot of faith that that this is going to be like what we've seen before with it classic Giovanni Savarisi side turn things around in the the second half of the season and this could be another year where they make it may may as well miss the the playoffs the second year in a row and there could maybe be some big decision that could be man I mean I'm thinking of Giovanni Savarisi uh, there's been a lot of Timbers fans that have also demand him to, to to be be far too and maybe some might might say the rightfully so because again in these last couple of years he has not perform well i think that mls cup run definitely buyed him some time but i think that time has start started to kind of run out because of the the poor run forms that he's been been endured with this team for the past season and a half then uh we go to rsl yeah rsl fans are really happy right now i mean again again I i've said this before i think rsl team could be that that team that that could provide a bit of a a, a fear factor uh in the western conference and maybe be that that team could could uh potentially uh be the contender in the West because when you look at the the this team you know uh adding Chicharongo was definitely huge because they desperately need it in number nine and a goal scorer that can score the goals and who knew that he has really lift up the this attack and not to mention the other thing that has got to be good news for RSL fans winning at home now they're finally winning at home their 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 home form has started to, to rebound and this is before when this is a team that has been very good on the road and that yeah i think this might be the best rsl team that i've seen seen in in a a long time and there's been some good rsl team in in the past couple uh or this past decade or so but this team could really start to make make a run and can really make a run in terms of the the top part of of the the sta standings thing and we'll, we'll see whether they can can do so as the season goes along then we go to the san jose earthquakes and for my quakes i mean I'll say they're right here, where I think they're still in a good good spot. Um, but obviously, I, I think for for the Quakes, the the concern is always going to be the row form. You know, this is a team that historically has never done done well on the row for the past decade, and this season is the same thing. I think they only won uh, once this season on the row, if I'm I'm not mis mistaken, and that's going to be something that they need to fix. But I think the good news, I think I will say about this Quakes team. Is that they still have? They didn't simply collapse as what we thought that going through that that grueling stretch of, of the schedule. Like I said back in May, you know they're about to endure a very grueling stretch, and if they don't come out of that grueling stretch, uh, still above the red line, then it feels like this is the same old Quakes team that I seen seen before. But hey, they're now out of that grueling stretch with them them still above the the red line, and you know, well, yes, they did go through a bit of an a uh, winless run. Uh, they also didn't lose a lot of games doing that that winless run run too. And I think the other big encouraging thing that I've seen for this Quakes team, they're not blowing leads. Thank God they're not blowing leads like they were in the beginning of the season because in the beginning of the season that was the most frustrating thing I, I've seen with this Quakes team where I I I don't know why they keep blowing leads. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with some of the tactics that Luchi Gonzalez put where they just kind of hold on for dear life and it just doesn't work. And well, we're still kind of seeing that in the last couple of games at least it's still kind of work out to a point where the the this team has been able to consistently stay in themselves in the playoffs so overall i i think think this has been considered to be a good season and again you know this season i didn't expect this team to make it to to the playoffs i mean i i can when i look at how this team is built i can see the potential Joe, but you know I, I definitely didn't think that this team team is going to to make it to 
the playoffs and it looks like they're on the verge of doing so and then the the last thing I, I gotta say as a Quakes fan that I'm very starting to be very optimistic is the fact that Christian Espinosa might, might have found his mojo back I mean I think ever since he scored that equalizer against the Galaxy in the Cali Classical he started to look like the Christian Espinosa uh, that we saw earlier in the season where he, he was single-handedly willing this uh, attack and we're starting to see it uh, again and lately and also not to mention they're, they're a team that have, have scored just so many bangers this season. I mean, have you seen Miguel Trioco banger that he scored or in the last couple of weeks? I mean, I'm still talking about it because of how, how crazy that goal I've seen. And that might be one of the craziest goals I've ever seen uh, in, in person at a Quakes game. Uh, then we go to the Seattle Sounders. Yeah, so for Seattle, I'm going to have to put them here. And I know they're still doing very well in terms of the standings. But when you look at this team, it is pretty clear things are not, not going well. And a lot of that has to do with the, the, the attack. It, it just feels really stale right now. Like this attack, there's there there's um, not really, really a lot of, of quality whatsoever. And it, it's strange to say because when you look at this attack, and when, it's pretty much much uh, been been the same and the, 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 the attacking core that, that they've been having for, for these past couple of years, it, it's still there. But you also kind of feel like maybe that attacking core has started to 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 age a little bit, and that fodder time has really started to catch up to that attacking core. Like we knew coming into this season, this might be the last run that we've seen with this attacking core because this might be the last year where this attacking core can still play at the the peak of their power. Well, I think maybe we're starting to see see that that come a little bit close closer to to the end than what we expected. Because again, when you, I watched the Sounders play t times, uh, it's uh, and even when saw, saw them watch them play in, in person when they play on the Quakes, this is a, an attack that I, I can understand why they've been struggling to score goals. It just looks stale and slow going for on the attack. Teams have, have, have been, been been able to, to easily, easily deal with the Sounders team because the, their attack has just lacked that, that creativity and lacked that, that creativity that we've seen previous Sounders team has and that that that's include when you have Nick, Nico Ladero in this team. I mean, Nico Ladero, it feels like father time is starting to catch up uh, to him too. And the same goes with Ru Diaz. I mean, Ru Diaz hasn't been the Ru Diaz that we've seen seen this season. Although I think a lot of that has to do with him being on on the IR so many times, and I think it's with just so many injuries that he's been dealing for the past uh, year or so. It's also started to catch up to him him in terms of not being that lethal finisher that we've seen in previous time but the bottom line is the finishing has been a problem it's been a very boring and bland kind of team which i think that sounders fans are probably very frustrated of seeing because they're so used to this team playing some great brand of soccer and now it just feels like it's an old and and kind of a team that you know when you have a team that's been been going through a, a long long decade of success like what we've seen the sounders team has had but eventually all things has to come to an end and eventually they're kind of in the tail end of that that window of competing it feels like the sounders are are in that stretch where they're they're in that that attacking core that's been just so good for them for the past couple of years it's now at the tail end and we're, we're definitely starting to see the drop off uh then we go to st louis yeah, for St. Louis, I mean, again, you know, they're they're definitely now in the category where I can officially say that it's bring on the, the playoffs. Like, I I think it's pretty clear that they're gonna be be another expansion team that make it to the playoffs, and they're chasing the record that LAFC set in terms of uh, the most point by an expansion team. Now, obviously, you know, when you look at this St. Louis team, when they do make it to the playoffs, there's gonna be a lot of question to come uh, when they get there because you know there's the question well yes they they might have got got there and they they they're pretty much playing uh house money because they have nothing to lose but how is the experience is going to look because it's one thing to do well in the regular season but then it's also a, another one when, when we get to the playoffs and we see so many expansion team uh there's a reason why not a lot of expansion team gone very deep into the playoffs because they just don't have that experience and and it, it just like the playoffs have said it many times for and this is kind of the case for every single sports it's a complete different animal than what we've seen in the regular season so it's going to be interesting to see how the st louis team is going to to deal well and especially uh they do get some of their their best player back i mean they just got edward Leuven back to this team they're still hoping that joe claus will be black back in this team before the the, the end of the season uh you know things are going to be looking good for this team but Honestly, whatever happens uh, when they do make it to the playoffs, you know, I think St. Louis fans got to be very happy with, with their 
their team. I mean, they're just playing for house money, and it's going to be interesting to see uh, how how deep are they going to go. And I, I would also say that you know some some fans have all, also say St. Louis is kind of like like the the Vegas Golden Knights of the NHL, and I, I can understand why that is the case because I I remember uh, when the Vegas Golden Knights went uh, to, uh, expanded into the NHL a couple uh, of years ago on uh, their first season, they went all the way to the Stanley cup final and they event, uh, well, they eventually did lose that to the Washington capitals, but that was a team that was like near the top of the standings and, and just have having an expansion season that, you know, you know they, that a lot, a lot of hockey fans were very surprised of, of seeing an expansion team doing so well in their, their first year. And I feel like maybe this is, might be the same case for St. Louis too, but Again, I think 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 when you look look at this team and just the way that they they've been built, I I think think it's partially the surprise factor of them playing very well and and teams have kind of caught off guard of how good it is, but also the fact that they they had a plan from day one and that plan that they they play and that energy drink soccer that they play, it 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 has worked with a treat and then some, getting them in first place in the standings. Then we go to Toronto FC. So for TFC again. Uh, I think they're joining the Colorado Rapids of the team that is CU next season mode. I mean, it's pretty clear that this team is going to go for a rebuild. I mean, I, I think they're going to have to blow it up this off season in terms of this this core that they build up. It has not worked whatsoever. I think they're going to hit the the reset set button heading into next season and going through through a rebuild. And that, yeah, well, we'll see how that's going going to to work out because I know for the remaining the season, it's pretty clear that this team is not going to make it to the playoffs. Then uh, we go to the Vancouver Whitecaps. So I'm going to put them here. And again, Vancouver, just like what I said about Columbus. And actually, you know what? I'm going to put them right next to Columbus because I think it's kind of the same reason that they have uh, as Columbus, where this is a team that their fa fans are probably very happy of how, how the way that they t their team play when they're playing at home, playing that entertaining brand of soccer. And I've said long time that I feel like the Whitecaps, you know, if you want to talk about watchability, rankings and which team plays some of the most fun soccer uh that we've seen this season vancouver is definitely one of that team i mean vanny sartini has played some very fun uh has been able to feel a very fun team to play and that feels like every whitecaps game is a must watch on tv the problem with the whitecaps is that the inconsistency ha has been been there and that you know there's times where they haven't they haven't been been consistent in terms of how how well that they have played not to mention the role form has been a problem. Like just like Columbus, the role form has been a problem this season. They've only won once this season uh, on the road, and of all team that they won on the road, it was against LAFC. Uh, that that is, though you could argue that uh, LAFC, you know, for the past couple of years, they've always kind of viewed Vancouver as kind of a bo bogey team and and always have problem in terms of uh, winning, winning them. But still, you know, this is a team that again on the road they have not been been very good, and it's kind of weird too because. When you look at this Whitecaps team, it feels like this is a Whitecaps team that is set more to be a, a transition kind, kind of team going forward on the attacking end. And I thought those kind of teams usually do well on, on the, the road. And, and also, uh, not to mention, uh, it's also a team that doesn't really, really uh, always tends to, to like to have the ball. Which, again, that's another formula of, of teams on the road that turns to, to have some success. Because they're, they're going to be, be, we've seen so many times when you, the, the way you approach uh, a road game is that you're going to maybe sit back a little bit trying to hit on the transition and score some goals and that's why some of the most successful teams that has been doing well in the transition has always been able to get get roll points but that's just not been the case for the white cap so it's kind of very weird to figure that that out in terms of the tactical set point but there or less uh you know i feel like like whatever happens if the white caps don't make the playoffs i think it's going to be consider a, a success considering last season it was definitely a, a, a bit of a step back of them missing out on the final day but they definitely have the pieces to do so and I, I also think that if this Whitecaps team when they're at their best I think they can definitely beat anybody in the the Western Conference right now but that's that's a big if too because there, there hasn't been a lot of times when they have shown that they're at their, their very best but there you have it. That is pretty much it in terms of looking at the emotion index. And, and as always, let me know in the comments below, what do you think of this emotion index? And as as always, if I rank some of uh, your team a little bit too high or a little bit too low in the emotion index, let me know in the comments below. But until then, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash the subscribe button. And yeah, I, of course, will see you guys next time.